Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another great episode of Bahrain Now, your source of local initiatives, happenings, talents, and trends. I'm your host, Bara Abdullah, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around the kingdom. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to delve in the field of plastic surgery that has vastly advanced in the recent years in the world and also in Bahrain. It doesn't only cover cosmetic surgeries, but also reconstructive procedures. And to speak more about that, we have with us here at the studio the plastic surgery consultant, Dr. Mustafa Abdel Halim. Good evening. How are Good evening. you? I am fine. Thank you. Great. 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 So plastic surgery a huge industry yes it's just it just gets bigger and bigger every year whether from the celebrities down to the consumers it's just touching everybody yes. tell us more about that you can say that the advance now is not on yearly basis it is almost in daily basis because oh, wow. uh, yes it is more advanced in the techniques every day more advanced in the technologies more advanced in the devices this helps us a lot in understanding the human body Okay. And understanding also uh, what to expect from the patient before and after surgery. Mm. Also, <coughs> here in Bahrain, uh, there is a lot of encouragement to get up-to-date uh, information. Right. And up-to-date knowledge by many conferences here. Yes. Also, Minister of Health here is facilitating to get more of technologies and more of devices, advanced ones, okay. to be here helping us with our patients. Um, the plastic surgery industry is now is, is evolving very fast. A, a bit too fast, yeah. Uh, very, very fast. Yeah. Uh, if you just blink an eye, it will be... Something <laughs> new is going <laughs> on. <laughs> okay. Uh, because <coughs> also the patient expectation of getting more high and high. Uh, this is uh, making us to get to achieve more result, more better one. Okay. More healing process, uh, more, uh, more downtime for the patient. Right. Okay. Okay, wow. Wow, it's just huge. I mean, even like some of the conferences we have in Bahrain, like BDLA, yes. um, as we've been part of that several times, we get to see that there's so much going on. You yes. just cannot really keep up with what's happening. But before you even go more into the industry, tell us more about yourself. What got you into plastic surgery? It, it has been my passion since I was uh, only a medical student. Really? Yes. Uh, so now I am uh, in medical field for about for more than 15 years. Wow. Uh, I am consultant here in Bahrain uh, in Smart Care Clinics. Also, I am a lecturer of plastic surgery in Mansoura University in Egypt. Okay. So I uh, got involved in many branches of plastic surgery. Many people doesn't know that plastic surgery is not only about aesthetic surgery. The mm. liposuction, the tummy tuck, the face surgery, the nose job, and so on. But also it has many other fields, right. like burn surgery, uh, reconstructive surgery, mm. also by um, hand surgery, maxillofacial surgery to change the bones of the face. Yeah. Uh, it is a very vast variety. We are involved in with many other branches in, the, in our practice. Wow, wow. It, it's crazy that I'm, I'm sure like when you walk around, sometimes you just look at a face and you can tell, well, he needs this, this and that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't look at my face right now. <laughs> I, I can tell and like many patients come to say, what do you think about my face? Is this okay? How can I improve? What is <laughs> <laughs> oh, What do you think of my face? It's, like it's okay. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Good enough for TV, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but as you said right now, you just mentioned uh, reconstructive surgeries as well. Yes. Now, that's like a big part as well, so yes. in pretty much in surgery. This surgery is it's an art to okay. replace what is missing. Okay. You may have, the patient may have missing part of his body, either due to congenital causes, he's okay. uh, born with this defect, hmm. or after trauma, after burn, also after tumor surgery excision. Right. For example, a lady missing her breast after uh, cancer breast surgery. Right. We make a new breast. Okay. Baby is born with no ears. We make a new ear. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is my MD cases to make a new ear for babies with no ears. Also, patient lost uh, skin, losing uh, parts of their body due to trauma. We replace them with new parts. Okay. This is crazy. It's a very large uh, wow. reconstruction. Wow. I can only imagine how you feel when you actually do that to a patient. <laughs> it's just, it just a patient appreciates this a lot more than aesthetic surgery. Right? Yes. If we're going to go a little bit more back to uh, aesthetic surgery, right, and plastic surgery, 
Now, when people come to you and they do the surgery, right? They say, I want to look a certain look. You yes. know? And, they're like, and it seems like the standards of beauty, especially for men, uh, I'm sorry, for women, and even for men today as well, it keeps changing every now and then. Yes. What, is, what, what, does, what does it mean to be beautiful? It keeps changing, <laughs> you know, the definition. According to the trends in social media. Uh, the, okay. the latest one apparently is like the V shape of the face. And I was like, mm. what? <laughs> but, no, when the beach people get old, they have second skin. Right. More of the fat and the skin coming down. Okay. Okay. If you see to the uh, uh, young face, uh, more the fat skin and fat is up. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> come to us. See to want to look a, look a young again. Yes. We have non-surgical and surgical options. Okay. Uh, we also only explain to the patients that non-surgical it's only temporary. It has uh, about mm. uh, five to six months only improvement yeah, but yeah. surgery it lasts more right uh, and uh, we uh, explain to them what is the advantage and disadvantage of every procedure right and the people always goes for non-surgical first and mm. they, when they love their face they go for surgery okay. surgery it's uh, like a life changing uh, operation mm. okay uh, also uh, standards changes um, now more people uh, were seeking in the past about two three years to make uh, to have a lot of uh, cheeks now yeah for for now they wanted to lick only cheek over the bones look in here yeah. <laughs> also more definition of the jaw bones more chin yes yeah. <laughs> this is a change <laughs> in the in the cosmetic uh, conception of people to themselves now okay and in my for my opinion according to the trends in social media so only a trend Crazy. and uh, this is a change they wanted Crazy. to change again. Crazy. Yes. I, mean, I mean, so it's, it must be very interesting. It's like when people come to you, it's like, I want to look like that. And you'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a very common co uh, uh, question for the patient. Give a picture of uh, an actor, a famous one. Yeah. I wanted to have his nose. I wanted to have his chin. I wanted to have his eyes. Uh, but we explain to the patient the reality. What is the... Yeah. Uh, advantage of having this what is the disadvantage and do you explain this this picture is under so many modifications by the photographers yeah this is not the it's actual literally photoshopped <laughs> with Photoshop. 70,000 filters <laughs> okay <laughs> and they got shocked what i think this is real no this is not real this is not the actual uh, uh, face yeah. but you will get you to a more natural look we are n now seeking for the patient to make natural, not l to make anyone see you and they say, yes, you have a plastic surgery. This is mm. not you. Mm. We, many, many of patients are seeking now this. Okay. I wanted to feel natural. So what is natural for my face? This is interesting. I, I want to do, uh, this is what we learn our patient. This okay. is natural, this okay. is unnatural. Amazing. Have you noticed a change in their personality after the surgery, like certain people come in asking for something and after the surgery, you see that their personality changed, they're more confident, or they talk differently, is there they is feel there differently. Is there is a real expectation before surgery, like okay. the patient of the a lady having a large abdomen after delivery and the pregnancy. Right. Also, there is a no breast for her, we get her a new breast and a more enlarged one and more cosmetic one. The, baby, the patient gets more confident, right. more um, happy with his life, more okay. happy with his body. Yeah. If the patient have n haven't real expectation, and this is the role of the surgery to see what is real for him. If he comes to me with about 100 kilograms and I want to look like an actor, what is about 50 kilograms? This is not real. Right. You must lose weight first. Then sure. we will go through multiple operations to look like this. Right. Okay. So explain to our patient, this is real. This is not real. This is good for you. This is not good. We mm -hmm. can achieve that. If the patient understands this, go for surgery. Okay. Okay. Doesn't understand that and insist to have unrealistic expectations, so mm. we don't do. Mm. Okay. Because he will be a troublemaker after surgery. A troublemaker yes. after the surgery. Yes. Because he also not uh, happy with his result, not happy with uh, scars, not happy with um, uh, the edema and the healing process that going on with him oh, wow. after surgery. Wow. So he will be a very annoying troublemaker. Oh wow. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Now, let's say somebody's, which I'm sure a lot will, is seeing this interview right now, seeing this talk, and they said like, okay, what can we do naturally, like a daily habits that can actually take care of our skins and the way we look? 
Like what would that be? Like certain exercise, a face massage, a food, antioxidants? It is a way of what? life, not only a simple advice. It's okay. a way of life. So if you wanted to look young and you could maintain the uh, good look of your skin and your body, so you have to maintain your weight by exercises, good diet, uh, by uh, going to sleep in a certain times and get up in certain times, drinking a lot of fluids and water. This is a way of life. Not okay. only to do one thing and yeah. I, w I expect to do that. Right. Also, uh, by if you patient is going to go low to go with losing weight. Okay. If he's going to lose weight, so we advise to him to go for skin massages, skin uh, devices to help him with the skin contraction of him to prevent the redundancy. This is a lot of uh, devices helping the patient through the process of losing weight. Mm. So he gets younger look, he gets a bit younger look. Okay. okay, okay, that's that's amazing. How many hours do you recommend us to sleep every day for a good health and good skin? About six to seven days. Six to seven, seven hours. hours per day. Yes. Okay, okay, well, that's an average. Yeah, yeah yes. not all of us can do that these days. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to social media <laughs> and other <Yes>. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Googling <laughs> 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 and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Yes. But that's very interesting. I mean, you know, as you've been pretty much exposed to the industry uh, at a such a young age, and now you get to see what's happening on international and on Bahraini basis. And you get to say that even Bahrain right now is pretty much catching up with the advancements of plastic yes. surgery. So what do you think of the future? What's going to happen? The uh, future is very amazing. I said to you, it's, uh, on only a daily basis, there is an um, uh, advancement. Yeah. But I think uh, nearly in the future, there will be um, uh, more machines helping us during surgery. Okay. Um, so, um, starting from what is called the VASERS and G plasma, helping us in uh, right. plastic surgery. Right. Now we have a lot of devices like uh, smart LIBO machine, laser lipolysis, also body tightening machines, all of about every day we have a new machine. Right. We are hoping to get a machine that is makes a beautiful go without uh, downtime. From surgery to work very fast. Yeah. It was very fast healing. This is our hope now. Okay. It seems we're reaching there very much with all the AI I we got and all the information <laughs> and all the research. That's amazing. Well, Dr. Mustafa, thank you so much for joining us right here on Bahrain now. I this has been you. very insightful. And I'm sure we're going to have this talk again with other topics in the plastic surgery industry. Thank you so much Thank for joining you us. Thank you so much. Much Thank appreciated. You. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our talk in the plastic surgery world with Dr. Mustafa Abdel Halim. All that took place right here on Bahrain Now. Ladies and gentlemen, with another exciting and very informative talk. As the old saying goes, beauty is only skin deep. And that's pretty much, let's say, holds a grain of truth. Our skin is the largest organ on our bodies. And it's the first thing many of us notice about ourselves and others. As durable as our skin can be, a wide range of stimuli can affect our skin and its health. To tell us more about this fascinating world of dermatology is Dr. Amin Al Awadi, a consultant dermatologist who holds the Arab European Board for Dermatology and an American Fellowship. Well, good evening, Doctor. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Bo, for, for inviting me today, and it's a pleasure to be here. Most uh, definitely. Most definitely. We've seen you talk so many times on social media and different conferences, so it's a great honor to have you here. So, a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Um, I, like you said, my name is Emil Awali. I'm a consultant dermatologist. I'm a head of dermatology in, uh, in Salmania Hospital. Um, I have to say I love what I do. Um, dermatology is a very nice field. Um, uh, a little bit about what type of dermatology I do is that I specialize in complex medical dermatology and that's the form of dermatology that's uh, concerned with complicated diseases mm. um, and, and the treatment of these diseases, both in terms of diagnosing them and treating them. Okay. So in a way, I get all the cases that you know, other people cannot diagnose or cannot treat, mm. um, uh, that those that require, uh, let's say, deep investigation, taking even skin biopsies, and, wow. and by myself, I read the skin biopsies, uh, formulating the correct diagnosis, and then treating the patients accordingly. Wow. Um, so, so there's something to that that's somewhat satisfying, you know, yeah. when, when, like, you know, we always grew up as kids, like, you know, like we like, 
you know, Sherlock Holmes stories and, you know, Agatha Christie stories where you, like, you know, investigate a difficult case that, that no one know, uh, knows how to solve and then you solve it and then the other person feels happy that you solved it. So, so I feel like that's, in a way, what we do in our, mm. in, in our practice, in, in my practice. Amazing. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, uh, and so far we've been doing good with it, like both me and my team. And um, yeah, uh, it's just daily, on a daily basis, we get like interesting people with interesting complaints. Uh, we investigate them, we treat them, and, uh, and uh, everyone's satisfied. <laughs> Seems very exciting, very interesting. Like a scene from the TV series House, I would say. Yeah, I would yeah, say I maybe a lot. <laughs> if ever you maybe, maybe you can actually have your own series. Like, you know, pretty much, pretty much a cameraman follows you with all the case stuff <laughs> like that. It seems <laughs> there's a lot going on with what you do. Yeah, well, a few years down the road, we might have enough material for that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I think you have already <laughs> as it is. Being the head of the dermatology department and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you get exposed to a lot. But, you know, it's so interesting to hear that because a lot of people will go more into the aesthetics when it comes to dermatology, we know where the market is, mm. but you actually specialize in the complexity mm. stuff where it comes to like, you know, it, the case was complicated and there's a lot of layers to it. So pretty much it satisfies you to see that, you know, you get to help people with those heart diseases. So yeah. we appreciate you for that. We need people like you more and often. Thank you. Amazing. So now, Bahrain, mm. it's summer. Mm. It's a bit too hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's, it's yeah. unbelievable. What's I didn't happening. notice. <laughs> 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 Funny. <laughs> Climate change is real, you know? Yeah. But uh, now, what can we do? You know, pretty much people are going out there for just a few hours. They got sunburn, you know? Yeah. So, oh, he applies, you know, the creams and all of that. But yeah. is there more to it than just that? Yeah. So um, th that's a very good question, actually, because you just mentioned sunscreens and is there more to that? There definitely is, and that's one of the things that I, I like to enlighten our fellow Bahrainis about it. Um, so with the summer, it's, it's, it's very hot, yes, but like you mentioned, there's something more to that, and that's the sun. So the, the sun exposure, the, 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 the way the sun is vertical and, 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 and constant and for a very long time mm. during the day, that's what makes the summer a little bit of more damaging to our skin. Uh, uh, compared to other seasons and compared to other countries. So heat, yes, um, uh, the, the, the weather is more hot and, and some skin diseases can worsen from the heat. Mm. Uh, an example is rosacea, for example, which is a disease that you know you get a lot of redness in your cheeks and in your nose and it worsens with, with heat exposure. But uh, the sun effect is the one that's much more sincere. So you got like, you know, your sunburns, uh, you got your skin cancers, and you got many diseases that worsen with sun exposure, like things like lupus, for example, mm. things like um, rosacea again worsens also with the with the, with the sun. So, so there are diseases that worsen with the sun. There are cancers that can be brought up by the sun. Wow. And there's just like you know sunburn. Not to diminish it, but that's also a big thing or a big fear that we have. So, mm. um, when people think that sunscreen is usually the 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 the, the trick to do it, uh, I always say that's partially correct, but not entirely correct. So what we do usually in the summer is uh, threefold uh, protection from the sun. So first of all, sun avoidance, okay. uh, sun protection, and sunblock. Yeah. So what do each of them mean? So sun, sun avoidance means that you just plain out avoid the sun in certain times of day. Uh, like, you know, between 11.30 uh, and 2 p.m. Yeah, you just, yeah. yeah, you just don't get out. You just stay indoors because right. the sun is so vertical during that time. And all the nasty rays, like, you know, <laughs> ultraviolet B rays, ultraviolet A rays, right. are, like, you know, reaching very easily to the Earth's surface during that time, especially when the sun is vertical. Uh, so we just better off avoid them. Uh, and number two is sun protection. By sun protection, I mean wearing clothing that is long and, and covers large parts of your mm. skin, wearing hats, uh, holding an umbrella when you walk out. Um, that's very important. And number three is sunblock. And even sunblock, some people might not entirely understand how, how sunblock works. So um, uh, a piece of information that maybe not everyone knows is that sunblocks usually work maximum for like 90 minutes or maybe even just 100 20 minutes that's oh, it wow so yeah it's not enough to just to apply a sunblock in the morning and then just go on through it the whole day oh, I did that mistake um, <laughs> yeah so so you you apply it at least 10 minutes before you go out it needs 10 minutes to work so 10 minutes before you go out uh, and then uh, it, it's enough for like an hour an hour and a half yeah and then at noon when you leave work to go home you should apply it again another time wow. before you leave work and wow. when you're out, for example, on the beach, you need to make sure you, you like you have a reminder or something like every hour, hour and a half, 
um, you reapply your sunscreen. Like even if you go abroad and see people on the beach, you know, uh, people outside know more because they go sunbathe more and they're, uh, especially white skinned people are more at risk of skin cancer. So you yeah. see them, you know, you reapply, reapply, reapply the sunscreen because right. they know that. And we should know that as well. So, so sunblock needs to keep being reapplied. And, uh, and one l last piece of information about sunblock. So sunblocks are excellent in protecting us from skin cancer. Mm. They are not excellent in protecting us from increased skin color uh, due skin to the sun. Color. So like, you know, freckles, melasma uh, okay. uh, uh, on the face, like, you know, darkening of the skin. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, sometimes when it's not uniform darkening, like, you know, some people want the tan, but that sometimes the color is not uniform. Yeah. So, so you, you, you can't use sunblock to avoid that. You need to wow. avoid the sun. So sunblocks are not designed to prevent from the, the pigmentation. Mm. They're just designed to prevent from skin cancer. And they do a good job at that. Okay. But just know what your sunblock can do for you. Don't rely on it for things that it wouldn't do. So what can we do for pigmentation? What you can do for pigmentation, honestly, is sun avoidance. Sun that's avoidance, it, that's just it. Sun avoidance. Just don't go to the beach every day. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, like, you know, I, I, I never like to discourage people from, from going out and doing activities yeah. outside. It's just like, okay, you can go to the beach and get yourself a good big umbrella, you know? Yeah. Um, don't suntan. We, we, as dermatologists, we never recommend <laughs> suntanning. It's just like, just like how cardiologists uh, would never recommend smoking. Yeah. To us, this is, like, this is our smoking. Really? Like, you know, yes. Yeah, tanning and sunbathing is our, is our smoking, you know? <laughs> so, so to us, it's like a no-no. Oh, you know, wow, wow. You see, two things people like like for the, for my, for my friends and all of that they keep they don't know like how many times they actually have to apply sunscreen and sunblock mm -hmm. they think it's just you know just apply it once or twice and we're good to go and everybody wants to get a tan at some point it's like oh we want to get a tan that kind mm -hmm. of stuff but we never knew it was that bad yeah it's it's not good because tanning not only does it increase your risk of skin cancer uh, it it, it uh, decreases the immunity of the skin because um, when you get a lot of sun, the immune cells in your skin uh, get uh, suppressed. And uh, the immune system is actually the, the, the first line of defense against cancers, not just towards outside infections, because cancers in a way are also foreign, like sometimes they're recognized as foreign cells, cells like invaders. Yeah. So just like your immune system fights infections, it also fights your cancer cells. So when your immune system is suppressed, your chances of cancer get much higher. So that's oh, wow. why uh, sunbathing also increases the risk of, 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 of both skin cancers and other internal cancers. From your perspective, what is the big deal about tanning? So, um, is it the color? I, it's it just some, some people are not satisfied, I guess, with, their <laughs> with <laughs> the color that, that has been handed to them. Okay. So they want a richer color. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm never against people wanting to, like, you know, modify or change the way they appear. And um, it's, it's, it's uh, as long as they can do it without harming themselves, that's fine with me. Um, but there are safer ways to do it. Like there are yeah. a lot now tanning creams, like, you know, creams that can enrich your skin color. There's a right. lot of moisturizers or sunblocks that give you a more like a darker color. Okay. And that's even temporary because you can just wash it off at the end of the day. Right. And it's safe. It doesn't involve you suppressing your immune system, doesn't involve mm. you putting yourself at risk of skin cancer or, right. or, or, or abnormal pigmentation in your skin. So to me, that, that comes as a good, let's say, in-between solution uh, to get some form of a tan, but without the harms that come with it. Okay, wow, that's very interesting, very mm. interesting. It's like, oh, I want to get a tan because, you know, it makes them look hotter, mm. makes them look a little bit more attractive when the skin mm. color, but never have I thought that it can be as bad as smoking to a cardiologist. Mm. You see, that's a statement right there. <laughs> now, let's say a lot of people, let's say they just want to say, you know what, I want to make sure that before I go to the extreme measures of visiting a dermatologist, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes we need to visit a dermatologist, like visiting a dentist, just to check up on our skin. But is there like daily habits we need to pretty much embrace just to have better skin, healthier look, younger look, and you know, whether it's for the hair, nails, the skin, what do you recommend? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. So. You know, with the with the media and with all the commercialization of the, like, certain creams that are very expensive and like you know that those that tell you that you know that keep you being young and some procedures that keep you being young and all of that. And yeah, some of them might work. Some of them have merit, but to me, it's like focusing on the like you know little details, but forgetting the the bigger picture. Um, the bigger picture is, it might sound very simple, but but honest to God, that's that's basically what our dermatologists would tell you, is that you eat healthy. You sleep enough hours, you avoid smoking, 
these three things are very much uh, uh, important to, to keep your skin healthy. Uh, other than that, moisturizing your skin every day, like okay. morning at night, uh, you have to moisturize your skin. That keeps the skin very much healthy. Yeah. And, and what we also recommend is that at night, uh, before you sleep, use what we call a vitamin A cream or a retinoid cream, okay. something like you know the commercial names like you know Differin or Accurtin creams. Uh, you apply them every night. These have been studied and have been shown to have medical benefit in preventing skin aging. Yes, you, get, you can use your anti-aging creams, you can use your vitamin C serums, you can use your Botox and, and all of that to, hmm. to keep your skin young. But this to me, these are, let's say, extra things. But you have to do the basics. Moisturize your skin, apply vitamin A cream every night, avoid smoking, uh, sleep enough hours, okay. eat healthy, exercise. Uh, these are the main cores of, of, of having a good, healthy skin routine. How many hours per day do we recommend for us to have a good skin? Uh, of, sleep. of sleep, yeah. uh, medically recommended, but uh, like uh, uh, people differ based on their needs, but it's between seven to nine hours a day. Okay, seven to nine. Yeah. Seven is okay. Nine seven can nine. be a stretch to some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I barely sleep seven hours. A day. Uh, <laughs> you and I, you and I together. <laughs> well, any last words? Although I would love to ask you more questions, but you know, pretty much it's a lot. Is it the dermatology world is just massive? But any last words? Yes. No, I mean, the dermatology, like you said, is a very broad uh, um, uh, field, and I would be very happy to, to, to explain more and more about several diseases in the future. Uh, maybe one last message for, for our fellow uh, Bahrainis is that, you know, always get your information, whether it's dermatology or anything else, get your information from trusted sources. Like, okay. you know, as a dermatologist, we see a lot of false advertisements regarding skin diseases, treatments for skin diseases. Uh, how to avoid certain things, uh, right. uh, and 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 many of the information that's that's you know uh, shared on social media or outlets that are not medical are usually false information or misled informations or inaccurate information. So so like you know you're never gonna go ask let's say your barber about law advice, and mm. at the same time you're not gonna ask your lawyer to, to, to cut your hair. Yeah. The uh, same thing with with with, <laughs> with medical knowledge, you have to go for the person who's responsible, you know. Right. And uh, and just like any other field, you always ask the experts. So so maybe that's just one little piece of advice I would share before the end of the interview. And uh, mm. thank you so much again for, oh, for having definitely. me. This, this was a very comfortable talk, very comfortable ah, sitting. Appreciate it, appreciate and, uh, it. And, and I'm very happy for uh, to be here. And definitely, I'm not gonna go to a lawyer for a haircut. I mean, <laughs> that's for sure. It's like, oh, well, I like to have the haircut under this certain decree, <laughs> your honor. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Amin, for being thank with you. us. And definitely won't be our last. We can't wait to have you back again for more talks in the dermatology world. Thank Much you. appreciated. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the very informative and very exciting talk with Dr. Amin Awadi into the dermatology world. All that took place right here on Bahrain Now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the finish line. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight. Another huge thank you to all of you watching us at home. As always, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love hearing from you. I'm Bara Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain, goodbye and God bless.